This is the Grow My Clinic podcast by Clinic Mastery, where we help you deliver amazing client experiences to grow your clinic. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Grow My Clinic podcast. My name is Jack O'Brien. Thank you for sharing your earbuds with us today. We have a couple of guests with us on the podcast. We've got Trevor and Ali from the Jane app, which is a, uh, a fantastic practice management software that you may or may not have heard of. But I can guarantee that after this uh, little conversation, you're going to be heading to the website to check out a little bit more. Trevor, Ali, how are you going? Hi, good. Doing great. Fantastic. So, uh, listeners, you might pick up on a subtle little accent. These guys <laughs> are based in, uh, based in Canada, but obviously um, cloud-based practice management softwares have no geographical borders. Uh, it's a fantastic platform across, uh, across the globe for health practitioners. Um, before we get into the nitty gritty of Jane and uh, how she, I love that there's a personality around it. This is great. Yeah. It's like a four way conversation with a, uh, yeah. another being. Tell us a little bit about your story, Ali. You're, uh, you've, you've had health clinics, you've got a health background. How did you come to run a practice management software? Yeah, the sort of birth story of Jane. Um, I was opening a practice seven years ago, which was multidisciplinary. So physio, chiro, massage, uh, acupuncture, naturopath, midwives, counselors, a little bit of everyone in there in one space. Uh, and originally looking for something specifically for online booking. I think we, you know, just the idea that when someone books an appointment, that's the end of the road. So they're doing all their research online, but then they need to actually book an appointment so that they uh, have a reason to close their computer to stop looking. And so I was opening a new practice and really needing to build up all these new practitioners. I was selling them a dream. I'm like, it's going to be yeah. fantastic. There's nothing there yet. It was like an empty space. I was just building uh-huh. out. So having to create an actual business that was going to be successful for all my new practitioners. Uh, mm-hmm. So I knew that beautiful online booking was sort of a, a big requirement for that. I was, I also was in the middle of building the practice and having my third child. So I knew that online booking for me was really uh, important and the only time I could get anything done was at 11 o'clock at night. And actually, we just recently ran some stats on when people are using online booking the most. Ah, so we said, okay, where in the day is online booking most sure. widely used? And it was 11 p.m. 11 a.m. So and yeah, 11 p.m. Yeah, 11 p.m. is our highest slot for online booking. And I believe that that's my habits. I booked uh, something last night, a, a float. I, I love floating in a float tank. And uh, oh, it was late you know, last have, night, nearly midnight. We have a uh, float tank users using Jane to book their appointments too. Yeah. So well, that would have been very of, handy last night. It would have been night, convenient, the, yeah. Oh, the booking was atrocious. Was it? So it oh, maybe perfect. I should let them know. Yeah. That's so funny. We, 40% of online booking in Jane happens outside of clinic hours. Okay, so great. It's you know, such an obvious thing to implement. Uh, the yeah, well, the, the learning there is that the for clinic hours. Getting otherwise, yeah. That's right. You're going to miss out on these. And if you're not providing a great oh, online experience out absolutely. of hours, yeah. you can wave goodbye to patients. So, And it's well. especially if you think about the ones on like the Sunday that are in pain, looking to get in on the Monday and they call, leave a message. But then by the time you call them back on a Monday morning, you've missed that early morning appointment and then they've, or they've gone somewhere else. And it's, it's actually really, I, it's vital. Like I can't imagine opening a clinic now and not offering online booking. It just, you would lose some, you would just lose more business I think than you can even imagine. And I call yeah. it the online waiting room. This is where people are going your website and your online booking site. This is where people are, they're making a decision about what kind of a practice you are and how professional you are and how much you can charge even is all dependent on how you have this online presence and on your brand and the brand equity that you create with your online presence is so important. So anyway, this is a long story to go back to. I was opening a practice and Trevor had, had a, a marketing agency. agency. Yeah. So Ali had hired my firm to brand her clinic. She was opening. So they're just doing like website and logo and all of that. And along the way there, she was complaining a lot that she couldn't find any good online booking software that would respect this beautiful brand that we were working on. I was not fishing. I actually just was complaining. Yeah. And to us, that was just like, oh, that would be fun to solve that problem. So we were like, hold on. And uh, we very uh, quickly kind of ambitiously took on this project and in six weeks built this little app that would do online booking. And then it also had a whole interface for her practitioners to do their their charting. So this was the the other business side was I had only so much income generating space. I had eight treatment rooms 
and I knew I couldn't store paper charts because they took up too much space. And I don't know, it's probably the same there as it is here, but mm -hmm. commercial real estate is really expensive. It's a premium. Yep. It's a premium. Yeah. And I was storefront commercial space. I was spending all this money in beautiful TIs, like improving the space. And I'm like, I can't, I can't have a chart room that just doesn't work. Right. I, yes. I was like building out, you know, you do your basic business model and I'm like, okay, yeah. well I need eight rooms that are all bringing in income in order to pay my rent for this space because it's a big commercial space. Mm -hmm. So I also knew I needed electronic charting. So part of the other thing I was looking for was software that would, that would offer electronic charting that was flexible enough for all of my disciplines also sure. did not exist. Like most software was really very discipline specific. And so that's sort of where so they, I just used it for a year with, mm -hmm. and I used they, it was on a Mac mini it was attached to my website, mm -hmm. my clinic. It was actually really fantastic. I think I called you once or twice that year for small yeah. changes and then we just used it. Just so, away you went. And, yeah. and I think that's really important for, for listeners to know that you're a health practitioner. You've built this for your own clinic and by extension now it's become this beast that helps so many other clinics. Can you tell us about some of the things that clinic owners should be thinking about when they're considering practice management software? What are the, the elements that you've built into Jane and what should we be considering when we're thinking about PMS? Well, I mean, I think that you have contributed just as much or more to this conversation actually than I have because when we started working on building Jane into a complete practice management software, it was really hard for me to break outside of that box of like, well, this is how my current software does this. And especially being in the clinic world, being like, well, I know my software did it this way, so this is how Jane should do it um, or this is how we should do it. And so one of the things that I really enjoyed was actually thinking about the real use case in a practice. So when you're, we're looking at practice management software, there's the different roles that are going to be interacting with your software. And it used to be just admins. So mm -hmm. back in the day, it was only the admin. They'd be booking appointments and doing their billing and that would be it. Sure. But now with the way that the role of the practice management software has expanded to include charting and online booking and patient interaction, there's all these different levels. So you, when you're looking at a practice management software, I really recommend that people think about it from all of the people who are going to be interacting with it sure. and not just one person. So okay. When you're, when you're considering your practice management software, make sure that your admin staff are looking at it with you because they're going to be on doing it working in a certain way. Your practitioners in your practice are looking at it with you because they're going to be spent interacting with the software as well, doing their charting every day. Um, mm -hmm. And then the clinic owner, of course, you're already looking at it. But even consider what's my patient interaction? Like what are all of these different oh. people and how are they? You now have everyone in your practice, including your clients, are going to be interacting with the software. So making sure that it does a good a really job in all the different levels. Yeah, 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 for sure. So talk to me about the practitioners, right? Arguably spending some of the most valuable of their time oh, yeah. know, on the practice They're management an software. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly right. Unbillable. So how have you made that beautiful? How have you made that seamless? Mm -hmm. What features are available for practitioners? I will say it is billable time. You need to be working the billable time into uh, the price of your treatment. And I hope right. you're telling all of your practitioners Abs this. Yeah, that's a really and good point. Can, that notes yes. are part of the concept. Part of your billable right? time, of the yes. So if you do a 45-minute treatment, you bill for an hour because you're going to do 15 minutes of documentation. That is not ripping off your patients. You're, you are a time-based – anyway, I can talk to you about, about that for like a long it. time. I feel oh, very strong. She's fired up. Here we go. <laughs> I am all fired up because physios and practitioners are – so your main goal is like working with patients and healing and helping them. And, and for some reason, the money side is thought of as being almost dirty. But I'm like, right. in order to run a successful practice and provide the best patient care, you have to be also working on that side, which, of course, you know, this is what you've done. Yeah, but it's, it's a great point where we're providing a comprehensive, complete service experience for our patients. And that includes taking great notes, drawing well, up great charts, communicating absolutely. with you know, other referrers. Um, so talk to us about the charts and drawing. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, everything we've designed in Jane, we've really thought about just as few clicks as possible and speed. So, mm -hmm. I mean, our goal is that a, a practitioner could be completing their kind of regular subsequent visit notes in like three minutes or less. Just, wow. so there's just tons of tooling in there to, to make things go quickly. So things from starting uh, Jane's templating system and the chart is uh, really unique in that we let people build modular templates and they can combine those on the fly. So if they're doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that in that session, like a certain modality or using a certain tool, 
an mm-hmm. ultrasound or something. They can just bring in specific components into that chart note for that day. Uh, mm-hmm. That's unique for that visit. And they can duplicate previous entries. So it just brings up a whole entry just as they've entered it last time. So what about few- um, yeah. iPads, yeah. body charts, yeah. all that stuff? Yeah, so Jane from day one has been kind of device agnostic. So it's been mobile friendly and tablet friendly uh, since the beginning. And the chart does have some really cool components that take advantage of the touchscreen. So mm-hmm. the, we have a, uh, one of the tools called a body chart. And by default, it loads up, you know, like the four little man. The man, the mm-hmm. four angles. And you can draw on that. You can just tap points on it and make corresponding uh, typed notes. Yeah, wow. Uh, each point. Yeah, you can and, also flip it out. Yeah, and you can change that backing image on the fly. So you could have a template that has a different backing image instead of the man. We have people using like range of motion trees or spine diagrams. Uh, or, or you can else. even you can upload a photo of your patient and draw yeah. right on it. Yeah, I, I know really this. Cool. And, yeah. So, so and that'd be I'm used, I'd imagine useful for hand therapists, maybe and, speech pathologists. Oh yeah, and pronation. Like so, if you wanted, yeah. if you're doing gait analysis, you can even take a video of your client and load it in, or drawing like um, curvatures of the spine or imbalances, and you can show progress over time. So my favorite use of the images right. is actually to do range of motion, like shoulder range of motion over time. So you know how you have clients and they're just like, I'm not getting better. And uh-huh. you can actually take photos of them over time really easily right into the chart. And then you can show them, you can pin it all to your chart. You can pin things to your chart. Anyway, it's like super fun. And then you <laughs> Amazing. Can show them over time, their actual range of motion in, improving so that yeah. when they say they feel like they're not getting better, you actually have a time lapse almost and there. I think one of the key things for clinic owners here is that where you might have been using multiple different softwares, we know that people might be using you know, the Huddle Technique app or some of these running gait analysis types of things. You can do that all in the one and incorporate into the, the treatment notes in the chart, right? Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. The other really interesting part of the Jane's chart is we built a template library Mm -hmm. and it was just a place where practitioners after they built a template, they could choose to share it with the Jane community. So this is now a library with a a few thousand templates in it, uh, over 25 different disciplines of templates. And it's just like the generosity of spirit. So people will just build a really great template. They'll share it. They get a little bylines. They can say a little bit about it and they get their name in it information and then people just take them in they start using them in their practice or you can modify them once you pull them into your own library area and they're just amazing like it's it's really kind of beautiful actually that's that's so cool i think that would really resonate with our listeners who are very open-minded and abundant sharing mentality it's not a closed door community but also and i know we spoke off air about your um your innovations and what features you're adding to the app Sometimes as practice owners, we don't know what we don't know. Mm-hmm. We use things a certain way, probably based on our experience with some other software. We don't <laughs> realize the capability or the functionality of what Jane can do. So can you tell us about how you, how you innovate, what ideas you take on, and how you help clinic owners really maximize the software? Yeah, I think we're, we're always looking to increase Jane's feature set in ways that are the most helpful to the actual practice. So we we take the kind of um, requests that come in and then we prioritize them based on what's going to be the most helpful for them, the largest user group. Um, but we're also looking to expand, especially in the insurance billing sort of realm. Yeah. So that's where we do a lot of work to ensure that you're not losing claims, that money isn't kind of falling through the cracks so that you know which ones are submitted and which ones are um, rejected and then you can rebuild appropriately to the clients. We also have integrated payment processing, which we're working on building more features around. So you can charge clients and store credit cards directly in Jane and then Mm -hmm. charge them. So things like um, if you are doing insurance billing and you're not sure if you're going to get the full amount approved, you can store a credit card on file and then have them sign a consent in advance to say, if anything that doesn't get approved by my insurance company, I'm just going to put on the credit card. And same for AR and no shows. And if you have the consent to charge the card and you hold it on file, they're so helpful, but a clinic owner might not know to ask for that because it's like you said, you don't always know what you don't know. So Mm. I think we're always looking to find features that we think are going to be especially useful or just fun, enjoyable yeah. mm-hmm. to make. I mean, I always want people to smile when they use Jane. This is our goal. Like I always say, if anyone says, Ugh, Jane, like I want them to email us or call us because we're always wanting sure. Jane to be actually a pleasant experience. And it, Trevor, the, the design element of Jane is just beautiful from the, the, oh, the online book. 
<laughs> no, we'll go all mushy. But, you know, for clinic owners, it's really important, like you said, Ali, to create an amazing experience. Um, Trevor, tell us about, you know, clinics can customize what online bookings look like. What is the, the design yeah. feel and the user experience like? Yeah, well, especially uh, anyway, anything that's patient facing in Jane. So the online booking or the emails that go out. One of our goals was that we make your practice look really good and professional. Uh, so there's just a, there's a few little ways that you can tweak it with colors and uploading logos and all of that. But Jane just makes you look good and lets you, you can customize all the language that's used throughout uh, all the patient communication. Uh, and the feedback from patients is like they, they love it. Like when we work in coffee shops around town here and we have our mm -hmm. logos on our computers and we have patients coming up to us and being like, oh, I use that at like four clinics I go to. I yeah. love it. And, Wow. And they start giving us future suggestions. Yeah. I wonder what you did. We, um, we've had, I think there's over a million appointments booked online last month. Wow. And using Jane around the world. So it's amazing how, it is amazing how important that is. But I always say that also that branding and that experience that you're giving people and how you're presenting yourself. I think we, we did mention it does affect how much you can charge and how professional you come across as a, as a practice in general. And one of the things that we really loved about Jane was the entry price point being low enough that single practitioners were using it. So mm. people who before might not have been able to use a full practice management software just because of price points can now yeah. start presenting themselves a little bit more professionally. So it was yeah. nice to kind of help out that market. And I think it's probably a little unknown, but your, your pricing model is actually pretty cool, right? It's for full-time practitioners, um, yeah. which is often pretty useful for clinics. Can you explain a little bit about the details uh -huh. of how clinic owners can get on Jane and what, um, what some of those packages look like? Yeah, this, the pricing, we, when we were talking about it, we haven't changed our pricing since we started Jane four years ago. Other than, we actually dropped it because originally our base price was for two practitioners and we had a lot of solos signing up because, sure. like you said, it was accessible. So we made our base, base price just for the one practitioner. But it was, it was sort of the same idea based on like my practice. I'm like, I have this practitioner, this acupuncturist, and she works one day a week and I don't really want to... Like, I wouldn't want to pay a full license for her. Sure. And I don't want to pay for my admin staff. They're not making me any money. Like, right. they're, well, I mean, they are. I, I have a whole talk on the importance <laughs> of a good admin staff. And I will, they do make you money. Yes. But I mean, they're not, like, actually income generating in the same way. Yes. So I just, like, this is, it doesn't seem right that you would be charging per seat in that way. So we do lump together part-timers to make licenses. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was just based on what felt fair and what felt right. And then that way our clinic, like your license count goes up as you become a more successful practice and employ more people. Yeah. And so you win and we win and it's kind of a per use system. It and then um, sense. the text message reminders are included in the pricing. So there's no mm -hmm. credits, which is, I know that's wow. always a little bit of a shocker <laughs> for you, Australian. Yeah. So there's no it, extras. It, it's no add-ons at all. Yeah. It's just amazing. Like, yeah. And it's obvious that you've got the practice owner in mind um, with all the design features, the, the, yeah, the billing functionality, no extra bolt-ons. But on the same side of that coin, uh, in terms of integrations, you guys do a whole bunch of integrations yeah. with, you know, physics. We track, don't charge for them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Fizzy Track one's so fun right now. Yeah, the Fizzy Track is one of our favorites. I think they told us we're the first practice management software to integrate with their new API they've just built in the last Ooh. month. So this API lets us do a whole lot more than what we have been doing over the last year. So Great. the, the end result is that you can do most of the functions of PhysiTrack, which, you know, prescribing exercise programs, issuing like outcome measures, surveys, mm -hmm. uh, and even launching their telehealth features. Oh, telehealth, yeah. Uh -huh. All of that you can do now right within Jane's chart. So you don't have to jump back and forth between two apps or wow. you know, multiple browser tabs. Uh, so it brings a lot of that. And then um, when you do assign an exercise in PhysiTrack, the PDF of that program gets automatically put into Jane's chart. So there's a, uh, it it's automatically added to the patient record. Amazing. Really nice. Yeah. That one's Beautiful. fun. And when I are think, we, uh, that's going to be, let's get, make, make him commit to a timeline for me right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like, maybe well, yeah. This, yeah. This episode will be released later anyway. Um, <laughs> right. And so there's a whole bunch of other integrations, obviously, you know, clinic apps or Tyro, high caps, and then all the suite of the Canadian integrations um, and across the UK because it's such a global platform. I know we've got listeners from Canada 
and, uh, and the UK and Europe. So that's really helpful. Um, guys, that's been really insightful. I'm sure that'll pique the interest of a bunch of listeners of the, the types of elements that we should be looking for in our practice management software and um, the questions that we should be asking maybe of our current providers and the other alternatives. Oh, one other I'll say is how do I get my data out if I leave? Just in three, ah, yes. we um, import from so many different softwares and it's shocking to me the ones that don't have a way of getting your chart information out if you're ever leaving. Sure. So I would just say make sure that you ask about data. We call it data liberation, but how, how you can access your data if you leave. Yeah, great. Great point. And I know on the topic of data, you guys are all clued up on GDPR and privacy, consent, all that type of thing. Yeah. And I think being medical, we were sort of already there. <laughs> yeah, true. And if people are looking to uh, maybe jump on board with Jane, you can help with onboarding, importing, that type of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, that's all free too. Yeah, yeah, we we have a couple of staff dedicated to importing, and uh, we wow. just make that part of the the free onboarding process. Uh, we also have um, for our Australian users, we have servers in Sydney, so all your data is kept in, in country, country and makes it awesome. You know, much snappier than loading things from across the water. Yeah, and compliant, which is yeah. important. It is, yeah. <laughs> In country. Love it, love it. And speaking of Australia, you guys will be down under here in a couple of months, is that right? Do you know, yes, I yeah. just read a whole article in the New Yorker about the Tasmanian tiger. Right. Well, the, the mythical Tasmanian the tiger. Myth, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to go find one now. <laughs> when I'm, yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to find one. Smaller, but just as difficult to wrestle as a grizzly bear, I believe. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, I know. Yeah. I, it was a really fascinating article. It, it was, it's a yeah, fascinating you, place. So. You You've never been to Tasmania. I haven't been to Tasmania, no. Uh, we'll be down there for, so Clinic Mastery will be down there and as will Jane for the APA Next conference in October 2018 at the time of this recording. Uh, so if you're in and around for that conference, please come and say hi to uh, Trevor and Ali. Uh, otherwise, you can catch them on the socials and online. If people want to check you out, where should they head? Jane.app. Jane.app. So that's one of those fancy new domains, Jane.app, J-A-N-E dot A-P-P. Please do check them out. We'll make sure there's plenty of links in the show notes, which you can find over at www.clinicmastery.com forward slash podcast or on all of our socials as well. We'll make sure it's all linked up. Guys, thank you so much for your time today on this episode. We've really enjoyed having you. Thanks for bringing your Canadian accent to our earbuds. (laughs) And listeners, we look forward to bringing you another episode really soon. Thank you so much. This is the Grow My Clinic podcast by Clinic Mastery, where we help you deliver amazing client experiences to grow your clinic.